Hey you guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video on the MTG Nerds channel. Before we hop into this, a couple things. One being, this is going to be more of a sit down talk kind of no script video. So if you guys like these sort of, I guess you could almost say uh, podcast type videos, make sure you leave a comment down below letting me know and we can do some more of them. But before we hop into that, you might have saw that right there. I've got big news so first of all if you guys want to help support me which i greatly appreciate one you can just subscribe and like the video that helps out a ton but you can also check out our patreon there's some huge updates going on over there so if you check that out link below uh you can get yourself booster packs bundle packs signed cards uh merch stickers which we're also selling link below <laughs> another little plug um Everything like that, you can check Patreon out, link below. You're helping support me and getting some awesome stuff back for yourself. So make sure you check that out. Uh, you definitely do not want to miss out. And the first ever MTG Nerds giveaway on YouTube, not on Instagram. If you want to check me out on Instagram, at MTG Nerds, we actually have another giveaway going on over there. So if you want to check that out, certainly uh, do that and maybe enter that give giveaway as well. But the first ever MTG Nerds video giveaway or YouTube giveaway is going to be boom monastery mentor so I'll read this to you real quick and then I'll tell you some details about the giveaway so monastery mentor two and a white two two prowess and whenever you cast a non-creature spell put a one one white monk creature token with prowess onto the battlefield now this is going to be going out to one of you guys uh signed or not uh we'll talk about it whoever wins can let me know if they want it signed but this is going out to one of you. All you have to do to enter is like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment down below letting me know what is your Theros Beyond Death favorite card from the set. I said that really weirdly, but what is your favorite card from Theros Beyond Death? Let me know down below, like the video, and subscribe, and that's it. That's how you enter. Now, also, with Patreon, if you want to check that out, going back over there, there's going to be even crazier giveaways out over there. Um, once I start getting some more Patreon, so we have more people to enter. So make sure you check that out. And yeah, you're good. If you think this is a good giveaway, wait till you see some of those. Hint, hint, I'm thinking of a booster box giveaway. <laughs> so I've got this giveaway going right now. Make sure you enter down below, like the video, subscribe, and comment. I've already said that twice, but <laughs> it's okay. $25 card right here. Going out to one of you. Shipping internationally, free shipping anywhere. Doesn't matter. I'll pick one of you guys and probably next week and you can let me know where you're located. Give me your shipping address. I'll have you email it to me so you don't have to tell everyone. <laughs> and I will be shipping this out. I'll be shipping this out to you right away. Boom. Now, with that being said, a little bit of a long intro, but hopefully you guys are hyped about the giveaway and hopefully you guys are hyped about Patreon get yourself some sweet stuff why not who doesn't like sweet stuff right and for really cheap so yeah let's hop into this so what is going on with theros beyond death collector boosters now i'm gonna be like slouching here like hey or, hey hey yeah this is a relaxing no script video <laughs> okay anyways so What's going on with them? It's kind of a weird situation, actually. So if you've watched a lot of, um, if you watch MTG videos other than mine, which, I mean, I watch other MTG videos. I don't watch my own, except for when I'm editing them. But I do watch other YouTube channels, uh, MTG-based. And I've seen some of the collector boosters uh, opened, and it actually, they're kind of crazy. Now, you're probably thinking, if you are just a collector, you're probably thinking, wow, these things are awesome. Or even a player, you know, a lot of people are probably thinking, wow, these things are sweet. But here's the thing with them, okay? And I think, as we've seen, the expected value of these boxes have completely crumbled, kind of like the old Theros sets. So I feel like there's kind of some PTSD there. But yeah. The expected value of these boxes are crumbling, and in my opinion, I believe it is all due to the collector boosters. So, what is in these collector boosters? They range from 25 to 30 bucks. You can get them at, um, I'm pretty sure you can get them at Target, Walmart, and you can get them online, you can get them at your local game store. If you're going to buy them, try and get them at your local game store, help them out before you help anyone else out, because that's where you play Magic. But, 
Um, these contain, I believe, let's see if I remember, some foil commons, some foil uncommons, two or one foil basic land, non uh, Theros art, I guess, so like just the regular basic lands. And they also include two foil Theros art basic lands, which is where it kind of starts to get iffy, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, also, one card from a set, a card from a set that you have to buy elsewhere, which I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> I'll explain it for you. That way I don't have to try and explain it in a few words. But basically it's a card that you can only get in like a brawl pack or a planeswalker deck or uh, the color theme to booster. Those cards, the ones that are exclusive to these kind of products, so you cannot find them in normal boosters. So you get one of those. You also get a foil rare along with an uh, extended art or alternate art rare. And then in the very back of the packs, you get two constellation cards, one foil, one non-foil. However, that non-foil one can either can also be an alternate art planeswalker or it can be a saga. I know, that was a lot. <laughs> but hopefully you kind of got that. Um, I don't personally have a collector booster uh, opening, but make sure you go check someone out. Uh, who has opened them, like Bad Boy Gaming, um, Alpha Investments. I'm sure there's tons of other MTG YouTubers who have also opened them on their channels. So you can check those guys out. But, um, so hopefully that makes sense. If not, uh, go ch like I said, go check out someone else uh, and then come back here. Or just watch this video and then you can go check it out. But, so, that those are the contents of these boosters. Now, why is this a problem? So if we start off where the major problem is, the minor problems, well, we have the foil uh, commons and the foil uncommons, just like um, the Throne of Eldraine collector boosters, but those aren't really causing much of a problem. It might make it so that the fo co common foils and common unfoil, common unfoils? <laughs> the uncommon foils and the common foils might be equal to their non-foil value, which is kind of weird, but the amount of them being printed is, um, it's basically a supply and demand kind of thing. So if there's more people, or if there's more common foils than there has been in any other set because there's more being printed, obviously the price of them is going to drop and it might actually level out with the uh, non-foil version. So that's not a huge problem. Where it comes in is when you start putting in stuff like two foil uh, Theros Beyond Death lands in them. You know, the big fancy ones that you either love or hate. <laughs> um, there's two foils in every pack. So these were initially, before release of the set, probably five, six dollars. And I'm really, really sorry if you paid that much for these because, oh, I'm so sorry. But these are gonna drop like crazy. I know they already have, but I suspect they're gonna drop more. They might hit a dollar. Um, they might stabilize it too, but they're not gonna be much. Like I said, with the commons and the uncommon foils, it's the same reason. There's so many of them being printed that the prices are just gonna shink, shink, <laughs> sink completely. So that's kind of the problem with that. So. I would be careful buying these, make sure you're getting them for a decent price, especially right now before the market has settled on these cards because you don't want to be overpaying for these because these are something that are definitely going to be dropping. Now, on to the next section of these boosters. There is a foil rare in every pack. That's not a huge deal. Um, we can skip over those. Um, there are extended art cards in the set, kind of like the box toppers from Ultimate Masters, but there's, you can get foil ones, but we're going to be talking about the non-foil ones here for a second. So here's the problem when you get to the extended arts, the foil extended arts, or foil rares, or uh, the constellation cards, all those kinds of things. Here's the problem with those. There is no problem until the amount of mythics that they're throwing into these. The, now... If you've seen these booster openings, I think it was Elf Investments. He got he opened two boosters, um, and he ended up getting 20 Mythics out of 24 packs of cards. At that amount of Mythics, why are these called Mythics? I think that's the big problem. And I think that is what is making the prices of these cards completely sink. 
Um, when you throw, when Wizards throws so many mythics and foil mythics into these sets, into the collector boosters, it causes problems. I mean, it's not their fault. I mean, they put it in there, so I guess it kind of is. But <laughs> the market, you know, is if it's if there's that many mythics that are circulating that are foil uh, and that kind of thing the prices of those cards are gonna sink like crazy. So something that might be really, really rare, like an Ashiok foil alternate art Planeswalker might only be 20 bucks. Like, that, the odds of getting that, if there were no collector boosters, the odds of getting that in a normal pack, now, this is just my reasoning. There is no confirmed rate. But I would say is probably around kind of like your Kaladesh case hits of lottery cards which is the masterpieces for Kaladesh, or Expeditions and the Invocations in Amonkhet and the other one, the other Amonkhet set that I can't remember for some reason. Um, so that's kind of what these foil mythic alternate art cards should be ringing in as in normal packs, and I believe they probably are. So here's the problem though. When you open a collector booster pack, which by the way, those are running, like I said, 25 to 30 bucks. If you buy a booster box, you probably get them for 215, 210. The problem with this is that they are throwing these in. I'd say there's about, hmm, I don't want to overestimate, estimate, but I'd say about six, either, um, I'd say about four foil alternate art mythics in these packs that is the problem these cards that are super rare that you might be like super happy of opening which you should be are now worth way less than they should have been so these like probably hundred dollar cards are now 20 bucks like it's it, like, it kind of just ruins the market. Honestly, the pack opening experience, if you're opening it to maybe get lucky, um, like you would open the Kaladesh packs for the masterpieces, like hoping you might get a Soul Ring masterpiece that's like, what, 300 bucks, 500 bucks? I don't even remember. Wait, hang on. I got my computer open. Uh, Soul Ring masterpiece. That is going for currently $339. So if you're opening these packs to hopefully get lucky and get something really sick out of it you still can just the cards are worth nothing because mythics are overrun in this set and honestly i think that's the major problem now this is kind of just talking about the market prices on these cards but later this week i'm going to be making a video on the expected value of these booster boxes and why it's ruining those as well now you could probably already see a correlation it's between the prices of the cards in the set the mythics are being completely dropped from these packs so um the most rare cards uh in the set are being are plummeting in value which are the ones that should have a lot of value which makes the booster boxes plummet in prices so I'll go into that and the problems with that in the next video. But for now, yeah, these collector boosters are crazy. They're super cool. I love the fact that you can get as many mythics in them as you can. But like the fact of the matter is that these mythics are now not worth as much because of how overrun they are in these packs. Same with the, you know, uh, box topper like cards, the foil extended arts in the set uh, for the rares. <clears throat> excuse me so yeah i think that's kind of where the problem is and the problem is that these were overrun and honestly if we look at the market prices before the set came out these collector boosters if you noticed were actually rapidly dropping in price before set release which is like honestly it was going to happen eventually like everything that wizards does or anything that any company does, really. Eventually, if they do the same thing over and over again, the consumers aren't going to like it at some point. Now, they only they have only done it once previous to the set, and I was Throne of Eldraine. Now they're doing it in Theros Beyond Death, and all of a sudden, it already happened. The, the prices of it already sank before re release on only the second time printing something like this. So that was kind of crazy. Um, no one had knew what was really in these packs yet. 
Um, but honestly, the sinks, the sunken prices are going to remain due to the prices of the cards in the set because the all the cards in the all the cards and the, uh, the collector boosters, the special fancy foils, are now sunk. Like I said, so that's kind of where I'm going to leave this video off. Is more of the story. These prices are sinking due to the overprinting of them in the set packs. It's kind of crazy. If you're a collector and you just really like getting magic cards, kind of like I am, <laughs> I still, you know, they're still a blast to open. I don't discourage you opening them. I'm just saying the prices of them in normal packs, like with the extremely rare odds of getting these cards in normal packs, it's kind of like, wow, I just got a $20 super rare card. <laughs> like, you know, like you want to be excited, you know? I guess that's kind of where it comes in. Like, do you want them? Because they're fancy and cool and you want the collector boosters and you want to keep them for yourself or do you want the joy of opening up a $100 really rare card out of a normal pack? So, yeah. Let me know your thoughts down below on this type of stuff and I will see you guys all in the next video. Thank you for watching. Make sure you check out the Patreon like I said and make sure you enter the giveaway. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.